This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the best way to make an amazing website. Hey guys, it's Max, back with another video and also a beard. We have this 2020 16 inch MacBook Pro here, just came in and it has the brand new 5600M graphics card. Today we're gonna find out, is it worth spending the extra money for this high-end graphics card for video editing? I have Final Cut open right here. And in this video, I'm gonna focus on Final Cut specifically. I know a lot of you guys are waiting for this video so I want to get some baseline info out to you guys some even asked hey I bought a 16 inch I just got one should I return it while I have the chance so I can get this graphics card we are gonna find out if you guys want to know info on Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve I will be working on that after this video so make sure you guys click that subscribe button down below now playing back this highlight film I have here has LUTs has some color corrections I have different stacks of effects it's playing back perfectly fine. I deleted all the render files. I haven't seen a single glitch, and my graphics card is only being used at 50%. This graphics card might be a little bit too powerful for a lot of us, <laughs> but let me go ahead and shut down Final Cut Pro. I wanna start out with Geekbench 5's metal test. I'm gonna go ahead and hit run, and I wanna just see how it compares to the 5500M and the 5300M as far as raw metal performance. Now, it doesn't sound like it's much more powerful, 5600 compared to 5500. Even the base 53 to 55 sounds like a bigger difference, but there's actually a much bigger difference. As far as actual cores, if you get the base graphics, it has 20 cores, 20 compute units. If you step up and spend the extra money, you get 24 with the 5500M and then a variety of graphics. This one actually jumps up to 40. That is a massive difference in cores. I don't know why they called it the 5600M. On top of that, this graphics card is pricey and that is because it uses HBM2 memory that is more than twice as fast as the other options. And we have a score of 43,144. That is actually just over twice the performance of the base 5300M and about 50% more performance, slightly more than that, than the 5500M. So this is actually close to the best graphics card you can get in the 5K iMac, the Vega 48. That's a desktop class chip. And this is a 50 watt chip in this laptop. And the performance is the same plugged in or unplugged. So you can edit on the go. So that's pretty impressive. Now, if you're somebody that wants to be able to do a little bit of gaming on the side, once you're done with your work, this is Unigen Heaven Benchmark. And here we have a score of 75.7 frames per second. As you guys can see, this is the biggest jump in performance for gaming in the last couple generations of MacBook Pros, and that score is very impressive. Now, I don't think you should buy this laptop for gaming, it's not a gaming laptop, but if you're gonna buy it for other use and game on the side, it's gonna do a great job. In fact, if we compare this to the best 5K iMac and our $5,000 iMac Pro, it actually outperforms it. Instead of 68 FPS or 72, we have 75.7. And even, you know, getting an external GPU with the best AMD gaming card, the 5700X, this actually outperforms that. That's about 70 FPS. Enough with the benchmarks. I'm not gonna give you guys any more. Let's go ahead and open up Final Cut Pro. I know many of you guys ask for real world playback. This project opened up right here. Um, about a six minute project with a bunch of corrections done, lots of effects, stacked footage, uh, some multi-cam stuff. And as I showed you guys to start, no issues. I am set to 4K, better quality right here, not better performance. Everything's unrendered, back rendering off. Um, no issues. You, If you're spending this much money, you shouldn't have issues in the Final Cut, and it's definitely not going to disappoint. Next, I'm going to test out Bruce X, which is a graphics rendering benchmark for video editing. I want to compare it to the MacBooks and my Mac Pro, but before we take a look at that, first I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Squarespace. If you've been thinking about making your own website, now is the time, and Squarespace is the best way to go. You can make a great looking website like we did with literally no web making experience. It doesn't matter if you want a portfolio, a blog, e-commerce, or anything else, you just choose a template and customize blocks of text and images. It's incredibly simple and unlike this laptop, it's also incredibly affordable and ours have been running flawlessly for years now, bringing in new clients thanks to its built-in SEO tools, which means you'll actually be found when people search for your business or any website you make. Start your free two week trial without a credit card required by going to squarespace.com slash or by using the link down below.
below. And if you use my coupon code, you will get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. All right, my background rendering is shut off. I'm gonna go ahead and export this, and you can find this project online if you wanna compare it to your system. I'm using ProRes 422 as usual. Let's go ahead and hit start, and I'll time it. Okay, that is moving along pretty quick. And it's interesting, my, okay, that, that, <laughs> that was too fast. My graphics card wasn't showing that it was maxed out. The memory, the eight gigs of that ultra fast HBM2 was maxed out, but the processor under 50%? That was actually slightly under nine seconds. The 5500M takes 13 seconds to do, which is also a really big jump compared to the previous year. My Mac Pro with the $2,800 graphics card, also with HBM2, that takes six seconds. So this thing is closer to my Mac Pro than to the, the 5500M graphics. So as far as graphics rendering, that is quick. All right, so let's take it a step further. Let's take a look at stabilization. I'm actually gonna be stabilizing this one minute 4K clip, not 20 seconds anymore, because these systems are just getting way too fast with Final Cut. Okay, so let's go ahead and test it. And bam, that took 10 seconds. 10 seconds for a one minute clip. That is crazy. And before we had 15 seconds with the 5500 and 17 seconds with the 5300. I gotta make this more difficult. Let's do a 30 second 4K 60 frames per second, not 24 or 30, raw from a C200 uh, stabilization. Let's see how long this takes. Let's actually make it difficult. <laughs> All right, our graphics is at 96% usage. So yeah, we're definitely leveraging the graphics. You guys see CPU is only at 23%. This is why for some people, I'm even suggesting go for a six core and then get a high end graphics card instead of maybe going for an eight core and getting a cheaper lower end graphics card because graphics, uh, it's a lot more important nowadays. And we have 39 seconds. Can you guys hear the Mac Pro right now? Definitely got loud. <laughs> That is actually a really big improvement compared to the previous generations, the previous graphics, as you guys could see. All right, enough with the stabilization. We know that graphics rendering is all great. Let's go back to timeline performance. You guys saw that 4K full res with different color corrections, with LUTs, uh, real world footage. This is not gonna have an issue. The 5500M did well even then. I'm gonna push 8K for the system. Uh, now, this is 8K ProRes RAW. It's about twice as more, twice as more difficult, almost twice as, as hard as regular AK ProRes. I want to try it. I might just be too optimistic, but let's open this up. This is an AK timeline. I have four 4K ProRes raw because I couldn't get AK ProRes raw, but I'm not seeing any issues. I honestly was expecting a stuttery mess because that's what I saw before on the 16 inch with the best graphics. It's playing back pretty good. I'm seeing on the touch bar here. A little bit of skipping. It's not smoothly moving. So I guess we must be dropping a little bit of frames, but I can't really visually see it. So it must be very little. Let me exit out of this. And we are, let me prove to you guys, we're at better quality. This is an 8K timeline, 8K 24 FPS ProRes RAW. So what we're getting here is we're getting 97% CPU usage. So we're limited by the CPU and graphics. We're at 77 right now on the graphics usage. So no longer is our graphics card the limitation for this project. Well, I'm glad I threw that in. <laughs> so let's get back to some of our regular tests. I'm gonna go ahead and export my standard 4K five minute project. I don't expect it to be, you know, have a speed difference because it, the graphics wasn't a limitation anyways for a lot of this kind of stuff. And we are exporting here and the graphics card's at 73% usage. Um, higher than I expected. That probably means that the 5500M did actually bottleneck it slightly, uh, but we're we're not maxing out the graphics card. It doesn't have enough work to do, basically. All right, and that took three minutes and three seconds. I thought it was gonna be identical, 321, but it actually was a little bit faster. Not that much, but we have something at least, and we definitely have more potential for a lot more graphics and some layering and stuff like that. Now let's take a look at C200 RAW. This is 4K60 with corrections and a LUT applied. I'm skipping the 8-bit H.265 that I usually do um, and the 10-bit because that's gonna be very similar. It's already really easy for this graphics card to do. This is a lot harder. And if you guys are watch, it's playing this back basically perfectly smoothly. I'm seeing a little bit of stuttering in the, in the little uh, playhead here, but as far as what I'm seeing, 
It looks great. Our graphics are at 96%, so we're definitely using that. CPU is barely being used. It'd be no difference if you had a six core processor here. Uh, so playback looks almost perfect at 60 FPS. Um, scrolling through here, no issues whatsoever. So it's probably a little bit better than before. So that was 12 and a half minutes, actually a little bit slower than before. We had 1050. I'm not sure what the difference is. I'm gonna have to retest the other MacBook Pro. Maybe there's a change in Final Cut uh, or something like that because our GPU is being maxed out. So I will follow that up in the comparison with Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve just so we can see a better answer why this is getting slower, where everything else is getting a lot faster. And now let's finish off with 4.5K Red Raw. I have my better quality on. Let's go ahead and play this back. Graphics cards at 49%, CPU still at 99%. Uh, we still don't have the Metal API for the Red Raw codec for Final Cut, unfortunately. And I don't expect to see a difference here because it is a CPU that's holding it back, not the graphics card. All right, and that took 10 minutes, basically the same as before, because graphics is not the limitation, it's the CPU and the CPUs are the same. Now, once that Metal API comes out and we're gonna be leveraging all that graphics power, this one's gonna be at least 50% faster than the 5500. But at this point for red footage, that's not the limitation. So what did we learn overall? Well, unfortunately, this 5600M is a lot faster than I thought. And I say unfortunately because this thing costs 800 bucks more than the base graphics or 600 bucks more than the 5600M uh, or 5500M, which is what I recommended. So if you're somebody that needs better graphics performance and when you're editing, you're noticing stuff slow down, I would say download ISAT menu. Keep an eye on this processor bar. If you see that your graphics processor is constantly being maxed out and when you're exporting, it's being maxed out, that means your graphics card is slow you down so if you need the better performance I would say yeah you get go for it you can get it now if you're trying to buy new if you're somebody who does simple 4k editing especially in Final Cut you don't really need this high -end graphics card in many cases if you're not giving it a lot of effects color corrections LUTs titles animations you're gonna be wasting that extra performance. But if you're somebody that is gonna be doing raw footage, you're doing ProRes raw, you're doing a lot of color corrections, you're stacking titles, you're doing picture in picture, all that stuff, then you know this graphics card really performs quite well up there with some of the desktop class graphics cards, especially in, in gaming too. Not that you should buy this for gaming, but it actually does fairly well. So there you guys have it. Make sure you guys click that subscribe button if you wanna see the comparison to Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. I'm very excited. It's gonna take a lot of time to test that, but I'll be making that video next. Check out Squarespace down below. They are great, very affordable, great web hosting service. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Max, and I will see you in the next video.